CNT 125, Chapter 9, the last little section on our WAN technologies is about satellite. Uh, by 1960s, U.S. was using satellite to transmit telev telephone and television signals across oceans. Um, today, much more satellite transmission is occurring for voice, video, music, data. Anything from, you know, satellite music, satellite TV, to GPS kind of data. A um, lot of satellite, satellite communication going on. Most satellites are, uh, circle the Earth at 22,300 miles above the equator in what's called a geosynchronous orbit. Geosynchronous means the satellite orbits the Earth at the same rate as the Earth turns. Um, so it, it's roughly, you know, uh, rotating the Earth at this, or I should say it's roughly following the Earth's rotation at that height. Um, a geostationary orbit is a special case where it appears at the same spot above the Earth all the time. Um, so directly above the equator, if you will. That becomes handy for things like satellite radio and so forth, or satellite TV, because it's always in the same spot. I can point a dish at it and always receive data from that satellite. So here shows a couple different orbits. There's your geostationary orbit, uh, you know, roughly that, that height around the, uh, around the Earth. Generally used to relay information from one point to another. Um, this becomes very apparent when we do the Olympics, uh, whether it be summer or winter. Um, it's usually in a country a significant distance from us. So our communications, television communications, are usually being sent through a satellite from point A to point B, from block country to here, um, or from here out to that block country. Um, and most of us recognize when that's going on, there's a little bit of latency because it takes time for the signal to get there. Um, and I always kind of chuckle that your, a lot of your television reporters don't seem to remember that. They need to wait a little time for the signal to get there before they can hear it and send messages back to you. Uh, uplink from your Earth-based transmitter, um, it's encoded and, and sent up. Um, at the satellite, there's a transponder there to receive that and turn around and send it back down to Earth at the receiving uh, station, if you will. Um, and the receiving signal, downlink signal, is picked up by an, a dish-shaped antenna. So here I show, you know, an uplink truck. Maybe this is at a specific sporting event. Um, that's going to literally beam that up to a satellite. That'll beam it back to either television studio or people at home kind of thing. Um, so that's the type of communication that's going on. Uh, your geosynchronous, geostationary satellites uh, are most popular for data uh, because it's in that predictable location, like we said, for television or, and or radio. Um, weather is a factor on these. Anybody that's ever had like satellite TV knows that in certain weather conditions, foggy, rainy, snowy, that kind of thing, it can affect your signal and affect the data that you're receiving. Um here we have a dish antenna exchanging or you know pulling information down from the satellite. Um, this is typically asymmetrical. Um, you know, I would have more down than I have up, that kind of thing. And then here shows, you know, satellite, whether it be satellite TV network going up here and people receiving it at home and or on their devices kind of thing. Here's your satellite TV. A lot of people recognize that as you're receiving. Um, and then also for radio, satellite radio. Um, and uh, I just put Sirius on here as one one example of. Now, in the resource links I have, I have a this site out there, heavensabove.com. One of my students many years ago that was a, a astronomer um, put me onto this because this allowed you to see. Um, this is basically accesses a database of things like International Space Station. In those days, the uh, shuttle orbiter, when it was going up to the International Space Station and so forth. So this is actually pulling from a database of where things are located. Well, the neat part about this is I can pull up a satellite database. And I can do something like I want to see a Sirius satellite to see where they are. And this actually references that database and tells you what satellite name it is, when it was launched, etc. Um, and with that, I can do, I'll pick on one of the more recent ones down here. Um, I can look at this and potentially look at, and let's try this one, that, try it that way. Sometimes it actually shows you a uh, where it's located. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Nope, that's not what I wanted. I'm going to do, I think, the orbit. And this should show where it's located over Earth to let you know what its coverage area is. And this is showing you there. It's pretty much geostationary there for servicing people in this part of the country, this part of the globe, if you will, for satellite radio. Uh, so just kind of uh, a neat way to see when they're talking about these satellites and, and where they're stationed, I can look them up um, as where they are to know what areas it's serving. So there's the end of uh, chapter nine for you.